Some of the more colorful and controversial artistic expressions of the Pennsylvania Dutch are the geometric designs painted on barns, commonly known as hex signs. Were they painted on barns to ward off evil spirits? Or were they just an outward sign of a superstitious farming community looking for a divine intervention? In this truly American art form, it all depends on who you ask. Although nobody knows who painted the first hex sign, where it was painted, or even why it was painted, it's assumed that the first one was painted somewhere in the Berks County area of Pennsylvania. Uh, the farmer himself, in the role of a folk artist, probably discovered uh, how easy it was. Maybe he watched an itinerant uh, minister or teacher that was doing fractor documents, how easily uh, a uniform rosette was made using a compass. Uh, the farmer developed a string compass with maybe two nails and a, and a string, and he would mark his barn and scribe with the nail, actually uh, scratch into the barn surface the rosette design. It's doubtful that hex signs were produced or painted on barns before, let's say, the 1850s because paint was hand ground. Paint pigments were hand ground, therefore they were very expensive, therefore barns were seldom painted. Uh, as the Industrial Revolution provided equipment to make the, to grind the pigments, uh, barns were then then started to be painted uh, frequently in red because that was uh, uh, ferrous oxide, a very common pigment, uh, very inexpensive pigment that uh, the Pennsylvania German farmers could buy the powdered pigment from their general store, take it home, mix it with either soured milk if they were um, not as a uh, wealthy a farmer or if they were a large, had a larger farming operation that they produced flax on their farm, they would mix it with linseed oil that was obtained from the flax to make a paint. It's curious to me that when you talk about the barn stars, uh, nobody knows f for sure if they were purely decorative or if there were symbolic purpose to them. I've never read a history account or anything documented that says for sure, although there are many, many theories. Um, most traditional scholars would say that they were just, as the Pennsylvania Germans would say, just for nice or just for so, just for decorative purpose. Um, however, the legends that surround the different motifs are so very plausible, so very believable. Uh, my favorite one is centered in the Disselfink which is the stylized Pennsylvania German birds. Uh, the legend is that the Disselfink evolved from the goldfinch. The Pennsylvania German farmer saw the goldfinch land on the thistle in his field and it would pull the thistle, the fuzz from the thistle to line its nest, the down of the thistle, and it would eat the thistle seed. So he started, the, the German farmer started calling it a thistlefinch and with his German accent he was misunderstood as saying Disselfink or so the legend goes. But it became a symbol of good luck or good fortune, the Disselfink, because it helped eliminate the thistle as a weed in his field by eating the seed and taking the down from the thistle. Well, in, in Germany as well as in America, the um, people would keep the items that were of value in the home, the, the linens, the quilts, the coverlets, Things that were valuable in the home were kept in a dower chest, um, especially by young women as they prepared a dowry to go into marriage with. They would keep these valuable things in a blanket chest, and that chest was frequently uh, beautifully decorated. Um, there's a similar theme or idea that the Pennsylvania Germans painted their barn as a huge chest that held the bounties of God's earth, that the grains and the uh, hay and straw and so forth that was gleaned from the fields and the animals from their prized animals were kept in this barn as a chest. Um, and similarly, the chest was decorated, uh, the barn and the chest decorated in symmetrical fashion. To this day, although harder and harder to do um, in the Pennsylvania Dutch community, um, Mothers and fathers, it's like the generation, maybe my generation and the older generation, 
the people in the Berks County area still like would like their children to still speak Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, although, again, getting harder and harder to continue that tradition. I think similarly, they would like to keep the cultural markers of their folk art. Um, that this is, this is something that our culture did and this is something that our culture should maintain. Especially, I would say, uh, there's supposed to be a period in time in the 1970s, 1976, where we were celebrating the bicentennial and all peoples of all cultures started to get more and more into their, into their roots. And I, I think that that's a very important element that the Pennsylvania Germans, in addition to their their dialect, their foods, uh, their their artwork is is a, a cultural marker, something that they they want to continue. Well, I kind of grew up in it. Uh, my dad's been doing it since I was two years old. So uh, over the years, I've helped cut the discs, clean the milk cans, prime the milk cans, draw the designs, go to shows, and eventually got to paint some of my own. And through the years, now I've been helping them a lot more often. And uh, eventually, I'll take it over. You know what? I like to paint the barns right now. It's like music, you either have it or you don't. I've taught several people and my sons have always watched me and, and Eric here has been real good at it. And he said, I'd like to take it over. I said, I want one of you to take it over because I ain't gonna be around all the time. And so I got Eric started. I didn't have to teach him much, believe me. He could teach me a few things. <laughs> he really is good at it and I'm very proud of him. The signs, people dream up their ideas too. There's all different things, but your main thing, the uh, stars represent good luck, good health, fertility of the crops. Uh, your, your tulips represent faith, faith, hope, and charity. Sometimes you'll see a serpent in the middle of the tulip. That was to keep you from the temptations of the evils of life. I took that out of mine, but... <laughs> But everybody has different ideas. Your distal fink is actually the goldfinch. And it uses thistle down for their nest and eats thistle seed. And so they call it their good luck bird or for good health. Hearts always represent love. Your scallop waters are the sea of life, smooth sailing through life. And there's all different ways that they make scallops and uh, some make a solid water. But uh, the border is supposed to be the sea of life, smooth sailing through life. And old Johnny Ott that taught me, he used to say the Irish hex was a shamrock, which a lot of people don't know, which I didn't know either. The shamrock actually stands for the three leaf is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And the distal things are for good luck. And Johnny used to say the green border for the money we all love so well. <laughs> You know, it's funny, at, at the festival, you get all kinds of people. And there's crowds of people at the Kutztown Folk Festival. And I said to the girl at work for me, a little girl I had, she, she was terrific. Uh, and she said, what are you talking about, Johnny? I said, there's a character out there, I can see him. And he waited till the people went by, a young couple. And he come up real serious like, he said, uh, Johnny, he said, I may sound like I'm crazy, but I want to know, he says, I read in the newspaper that you can make a fertility sign and uh, for people to have children. He said, my wife and I have been married four or five years now and nothing happens. I said, oh, come off it. He says, come on. He said, I know you can make one. I said, I'm not a prophet. I'm an artist. I'll make it. If you believe in it, that's up to you. So I made, I had a son and rain there, a son and rain in fertility, and he bought it. And that was all. And then about five, six years later, Oh, it was more than that, maybe 10 years. The same guy comes back and he's got boom, boom, boom. He's got four little kids, one right after another. And his wife is pregnant and he's carrying my sign. He says, it's fade a little bit. And he says, hey, buddy, you remember me? 
I said, no, I don't. But I said, that's my sign. He said, you're darn right it is. He said, I asked for a, a child, not five or six of them. He said, here it is. You can have, that's a true story. You can have it back. And I got a big kick out of that.